All right, so today we're going to look at what's called tolerance, and you guys should find this in your little booklet if you haven't done so already. Okay, so, and I've got mine here, so I know what you are missing. So tolerance is the measurement variation or the change allowed so that an item is acceptable for its intended purpose. Okay? When you build things, they have to be a certain size. Um, water bottles there, right? Contain, that one probably contains how much you think? Someone has left here. 591. Probably 500 milliliters. 591. He knows, right? Why do you think they picked 591? That's a weird thing. That is weird. But the bottle has to be the exact, like every bottle has to be the same size, right? But is it perfectly exactly the same size? No. Oh. Probably a little teeny tiny bit of difference, right? But I mean, it doesn't really matter so much here, right? They have to be a certain height so that they can be packaged nice and flat and everything, right? So there's always that kind of thing. Um, you're building a hole punch, right? The holes have to be the correct distance apart. It would really suck if the holes were a different distance than the binders. Although for kids, probably not so much because they don't use burn. I use the binder. Oh, wow. I'll just carry a box around with some out. So that's what we're talking about. It's the measurement variation allows that it is acceptable for its intended purpose. Like if the holes in the hole punch are out by like maybe a tenth of a millimeter, which there's a name for, I can't come up with, right? It's out by a tenth of a millimeter. Uh, it should be recording. It's recording. Yay! But it's hiding itself. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, so if it's out by just a little teeny tiny bit, it's okay. But if it was out by like a whole centimeter, not okay, right? So how much can you tolerate? Here's another definition you'll need to know. The nominal value. It is the target value for a measurement. It's what you're aiming for. Going back to the targets at the start, right? It's what you're trying to make that measurement be. It's called the nominal value. Nominal, probably Latin, it comes from named. Right, so it's the name value. It's what you're aiming for. The tiles on the on the floor, they are one foot, twelve inches by twelve inches. Right, they are supposed to be twelve inches by twelve inches. They're probably not exactly twelve inches. When building or assembling any object, from a simple first case to a complex computer, you must take measurements. Your measurements should always be as accurate as possible, and they should be precise enough for the needs of the project. Right. So, in other words, like if you're building a deck outside, is it okay? But it's a giant deck. Mine's really big. Is it okay if you're out a quarter inch by the time you get to the end? It's not going to matter. Right? My wife's not going to notice. My mom's not going to notice. My dad's not going to notice. Right? Just go ahead. I remember I was having a hard time getting my deck squared up. My neighbor came over and said, holy cow, man. He saw it all. And you're building a dance floor. And I said, yeah, I can't quite get it squared. He says, just start. He says, we'll figure it out when you get to the end. It'll all work out. And of course it did. Right? If you're building a rocket ship to go to Mars, you want to make sure the door is sealed properly and completely, like, yes, you do, right? That matters, right? If you're building a complex engine like that, you got to make sure the parts are perfect. Yeah, really smart to work on that. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not smart enough to even know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. When manufacturing a product, a range of sizes is often acceptable. A range of sizes. So like, you know, from this to this, right? Josh, are you still talking to mom? No. Now who are you talking to? Ruben? Who? You're right. Good answer. Elvis, take his phone away. Huh? Put it in your pocket and concentrate. For example, if you're making what's called a mortise and tenon joint, you learn how to do that in carpentry. As shown in the diagram, the tenon needs to be small enough to fit into the mortise, but large enough so that it will not fall out. I don't think you guys need any. Okay, you do you? Okay. Often acceptable. The range in acceptable values is called a tolerance. Oh, yes. I don't think you need to fill that in, but you should probably underline it. Okay? The range in acceptable values is called a tolerance. How much you're allowed to be out by. Okay, so here's the picture here, right? If you're doing some woodworking, 
That, this thing is called, which one's this? I think this is called the mortise. The sort of the, the male end, if you will. And the female end is called the tenon. They have to fit together. Right? They have to be able to, it has to be tight, but it has to not be so tight that it doesn't go in there. But you don't want it to come out either. Right? Now, I saw some Japanese woodworker thing on line the other day. It was pretty cool. They were, I'll see if I can find it. Like, they had like a little wedge that kind of pushed it in, and then it was like, there was nothing holding it together other than friction. Wow. Let's see if I can find it. So the tolerance is determined by subtracting. Fill that word in. Tolerance is determined by subtracting the minimum acceptable value from the maximum accepted value. That's the difference. The target value usually halfway. All the nominal value. I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. All right. Tolerance and uncertainty are not the same. They feel kind of the same. They feel ish like that. But they're not, right? An uncertainty shows the margin of error. How much our measured value could be out. While a tolerance shows the range of acceptable value for a measurement. Right? And there's a star there because this quite likely could be an exam question. Okay? But the uncertainty is how much you could be out by based on your measuring device. Tolerance is what you're allowed to be out by. Does that kind of make sense? Should I put that in English words like that? Do you want, to write, do you want me to write that in there? In sort of in my own words? How much you're out by, caused by the measurement device. Like you don't have any control over it, it's how much you're out by by the measurement device. And the tolerance is how much you're allowed to be out by. You can if you want. I just I think it sort of makes it a little more understandable, right? And tolerance is related to um, like what's what's the what's the object being used for, right? Like if you're making kids bouncy balls and you're out by quarter centimeter, is it a big deal? No, three-year-olds don't care, right? But if you're building ball bearings to go into a engine or a vehicle of some kind, then that matters. It's got to be pretty more exact. Okay, I'll pause. I think they have a chance. I think they're going to win a couple games, for sure. I do not think it's going to be four straight. Yeah. Okay, manufacturing tolerance can be written in four ways. Now, you guys have to fill this all in. I wish I had a screen shade, but I don't. And I apologize for the terrible production values here. Clearly, a photocopy of a photocopy of a typewritten thing made in 1974. <laughs> so, manufacturing tolerance can be written in four ways. You can either put it as Maximum value on the top and minimum value on the bottom. And I don't think they use a line. I think they just sort of write the two values on top of one another. The second way is the nominal value plus or minus half the tolerance. And I'm going to put a star there beside that. In my experience, that's the most common way in the real world. You can also write the minimum value 
and then up sort of like as a superscript, like a squared or a cube kind of thing, minimum value you can put like plus the tolerance minus zero, which I have never seen in my entire life. Or the sort of the complement of that would be the maximum value then plus zero and then minus the tolerance sign. And you apparently need to be able to write them all four different ways. So I'm going to pause there and make sure you guys get them all done. Okay, let's move on here. Let's do some examples, I think, right? Okay, so here we have a cook. Sounds like a female name. Mackenzie's making caramel candies. The recipe says to use a candy thermometer. You guys got a candy thermometer down in the kitchen down there? <laughs> well, the, the thermometer that measures temperatures of candies. You got a meat thermometer down there? Pretty much. Monitors the temperature of the sugar mixture. If it's not heated enough, the candies will not hold their shape. And if it is heated too much, the candies will be too firm. The sugar mixture must be, be heated between 245 and 250, which seems like a weird range. Yes. What is the temperature tolerance of the sugar mixture? Okay, so the tolerance is the difference between maxed and min. Uh, I guess, yeah, I would say probably a small t, yeah. It's the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So the maximum, I'll, you can get one of these T. Well, we do the maximum. 250 minus 245. It's 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a stupid temperature scale, by the way. Hey, let's have a freezing point of zero, which is an important temperature, as 32. <laughs> like, really? That's what, like you, when you, when you're baking, when you're using the oven, and it always gives you the temperature in Fahrenheit, right, right. So that that scale, right, that scale, water freezes at 32 degrees. What's what's the temperature that water freezes in, in Celsius? Zero. Makes perfect sense, right? You got me, man. Yeah, you got me. Yeah. He was born German and then emigrated to the United States. Okay, so write the acceptable temperature range in each of the four ways shown above. So, the four different ways. The first way, you just write the maximum. 250 degrees F and the minimum 245 so that's like way one the second way which is kind of the most common way in my experience you have to do the the, the target in the middle okay so this one in this case is going to take a little bit now our range is from 245 to two no yeah, 245 to 250, right? So what's the target? What's in the middle? The, the average, right? So, so the, the, the nominal value, the target, is going to be 245 plus 250 divided by 2. It's like, right, it's the average. 247.5. That's what you're trying to get the temperature to be at. Now, you got to have a pretty good thermometer. Write that down in number two? Yeah. Well, I'm just kind of doing the pre-work, right? So that's going to be the target. It's going to be 247.5 plus or minus half the tolerance. What was the tolerance equal to? 5. So 2.5? 247.5 plus or minus 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the second one. Now, normally, the target would be something like a little bit more sort of, um, you guys usually use the word even, but that's not correct. Some, somewhere more like around 250, so a round number. I do know that candy making temperatures have to be very exact. I do know that. 
Okay, so that's the second way. Now the third way is even weirder. Okay, the third way you write, it's the minimum value, and then you put plus the tolerance. So the minimum value here is, oops. It won't let me go back. I gotta be so careful not to make mistakes. The minimum value is 245, and then you put a plus five degrees F and a minus zero. So it, right, the lowest is 245, and you can go up five. That's the third way. And the fourth way is the exact opposite of that. You put the biggest value, the 250, the maximum, plus zero and minus five degrees. I don't like either one of those. Have you ever seen that, yeah. Pazlowski? Uh, not normally. No. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree that the most common would be the plus Absolutely, or minus? Absolutely, yeah. 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 All right. Not a big fan of that question. I'm not the boss. Tony Danza is. Who? Tony Danza. He's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's an old person joke, Josh. Not a smart person. Old person joke. Okay. Serena is making a new front door for her house. In order to fit properly in the frame, the door, must, the door width must have a nominal value of 24 inches and a tolerance of one foot. Does that make any sense at all, Bodie? None whatsoever. There is clearly a mistake here. This tolerance should be. Should be one inch. Yes, I would agree. The tolerance should be one inch. And even that seems awfully big, doesn't it? No. No? Because there's usually half an inch on the inside. Okay. Of the door. The, the gas, the weather stripping, yeah. 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 I was over at, here's an interesting, I'm just going to put pause here. Did I tell you guys the story? I went over to that zero net energy house there the other day. Oh, Did no. I tell you this? No. Okay, let me just pause here. Let's go back to our regular scheduled program. Okay. Okay, so we do agree that there's a mistake here. So the, the door should be 24 inches and a tolerance of one inch. So what are the maximum and minimum allowable values of the doorway. Okay, so here, tolerance is one, right? So what is our target? 24, right? So we're going to take 24 inches. But remember, the tolerance is one, so that means that you're, the range, like you can go up. Do you go up by one and down by one? Is that what you do? Like, is it going to be 23 and 25? No, it's only half of this, right? Half of this. We're going to add and subtract half of this. So it's going to be 24 inches plus or minus a half an inch. Which is going to give you a range of, we're going to go 24 minus a half, which is, of course, 23 and a half. <laughs> what? Bodhi, or um, Josh, when you get your house built, make sure you get a red silk carpet in it. Yeah, do your plans for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you another story right away. Another another, another interesting story about kind of stuff like that. So now we're going to go 24 plus a half. So the range is from 23 and a half to 24 and a half, right? That is our acceptable range. So years ago... NASA was uh, getting, um, we're moving on. Christian, over here. He's in the PowerPoint. I didn't make this Christian, so he's in the PowerPoint. He's building a brick wall as a fence in his client's yard. His clients have asked that now no client is ever going to do this. Client has asked that the wall be 2.4 meters, 2.40 meters tall with a tolerance of 10 centimeters so as not to obstruct the view from their patio but so that their dog will not be able to jump over the fence. All right, got that? What is the range of acceptable heights of the wall? Okay, so the tolerance was, or the, it was 2.40 meters with a tolerance of 10 centimeters. Now notice here that this is in meters and this is in centimeters. So what should we do? We should probably convert. Which one's easiest? Uh, 
doesn't really matter, right? I don't think about it. I'm going to convert 2.4 meters to 240 centimeters. So 240 with a tolerance of 10. So what is the range of acceptable heights? Again, we're going to add and subtract half the tolerance. So it's going to be 240 centimeters plus or minus. Can I write it like this? 10 divided by 2? Right? 240 centimeters plus or minus 5 centimeters. So the range is going to be 240 minus 5. 235 centimeters, which of course is the minimum. And the maximum is going to be 240 plus 5, which is 245, which is the max. Does that make sense? Part B is an interesting question. I'd like to look at part B because I think it's a good thinker question. Yeah. Are you guys ready to move on to part B? And then I'll stop. I promise. If each brick has a height of 7.5 centimeters plus or minus 0.25, and the mortar between must be 0.75 and 1 centimeter thick, between 0.75 and 1 centimeter thick between each row of bricks, how many rows of bricks of mortar will it take to build the wall? Okay, so like what's going on here? We're building bricks, right? And you got to go up, and the total height here has to be 240 centimeters, but like each brick is 7.5, but there's a tolerance there. There's a there's a plus minus, right? How many rows am I going to need? How many bricks should I order? What do you think? What should be our strategy here, Kelsey? It's kind of confusing, right? I had to stop. I admit I had to stop and think about this. This was my thought. I thought to myself, I'm going to max everything up. What's that? Is there height goal? No, just the height. How many, how many bricks take to make the height? Yeah, that's what we're going to do, right? We only, we only care about the height. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So what I did was I took the maximum height for everything. So the maximum height was, what did we just say? What was the, what was the, what was the biggest value they would accept? Uh, 245. 245 centimeters. Okay, oh, that's the max height of the wall. What's the max height of a brick? Max height of a brick is 7.5 plus 0.25, right? So the max height of the brick is 7.75, isn't it? 7.75. And the max height of the mortar, do you guys know what mortar is? The, the sticky stuff, the cement stuff that goes in between? The max height of that is 1 centimeter, right? So here's what I did. I'm going to add those two together, and I'm going to get 8.75. So the maximum height of one brick plus one row of icing the mortar is 8.75. How many rows do I need? I have to divide it up, right? I'm going to take 245 and I'm going to divide by 8.75. And guess what I got? I got exactly 28. So, I would say that the bricklayer person here wants to, even if they get maximum size bricks, they just have to keep that mortar between 0.75 and 1, and they should not go above that, right? But they sort of, if that's the tolerance that they want, they sort of have to sort of plan that out and be very careful. No, they're certainly not. But are they likely going to be, if this is exactly 28, 28 rows, are they going to be okay? Because you're right, every brick is not going to be maximum size, right? As long as none of the bricks are above that maximum size, you're okay. You can't really count. Shave a brick down. I think we're done now, yeah. That was a lot of yakking, wasn't it?
I will stop.